For the first time ever, this year's Women's Six Nations will be a standalone tournament. Organisers have confirmed that the new format is likely to only be in place for 2021, but it does give the women's game a great opportunity to shine. Now that it's on BBC um, iPlayer and stuff, I think we should get some good viewing figures um, that way. Um, and like you said, it's just all the media that go like doing interviews like this. Um, you know, we can build up some momentum and it being just after the men's well, the Six Nations is obviously kind of on people's minds at the minute. Um, so hopefully kind of build off that momentum. So we played double header with the men. Obviously it's really exciting, but it often means, you know, we're in, in out the back somewhere getting changed. We don't get anywhere to warm up. So in terms of actual prep for us for a game, it's not always the best. So um, that's kind of why I wish we were allowed crowd because then people would be coming to watch and be coming to watch us, not necessarily like, oh, the men are playing, I might stick around for the, for the women. So um, that's the only like downside I wish we could obviously have um, fans in the crowd but I think you know having our own tournament um, you get the the hardcore women's rugby fans but because there's no real competition with the men's rugby um, people just want to watch rugby hopefully and you might get some crossover with, with um, people that have never watched the game before. Like the men's the Six Nations is usually a six-team round-robin tournament but this year they'll be split into two pools of three teams with the final round of games on the 24th of April, pitting teams against their equivalent in the other pool to decide final positions. England have won the Grand Slam for the last two years and they face Scotland and Italy in their pool matches. I don't know if we can call it a Grand Slam. Even if they say it can be called a Grand Slam, I don't think it can be. I think you, I think as a player, you definitely need to be everyone to say that. Um, yeah, a little bit different, not really sure how it's gonna, gonna be, especially, um, playing two teams and then you're not really sure who your final opposition could be. Um, uh, yeah, it's something new, isn't it? It's something, you know, we've all become really good at adapting throughout this, these COVID times. So um, just something else to adapt to, I suppose. As there hasn't been an inter-services competition for the last two years, the RAF women remain champions after their historic win over the army at King's home in 2019. As an elite athlete, Amy's RAF commitments are minimal these days, but she says, using her as an example, the Air Force are continuing to recruit from the sporting world. And I wouldn't sell people the dream if it wasn't a reality at the end of the day. You know, um, I'm very fortunate in the position that I am now to be able to play rugby uh, full time and still have that, that Air Force career to kind of go back to or have, have outside of rugby. So I think I've kind of just knocked on the door of it and, that, and a few girls have gone, oh, you seem to be uh, doing all that for yourself. I, I want a bit of that. So, uh, yeah, you know, we've got loads of um, people like Karis Williams and Sarah Bonner, who um, she's going for her training at the minute, so she won't be playing for Scotland this weekend. But um, I've kind of seen the light, the light blue family light and, um, and, and yeah, followed suit. So hopefully we can encourage more girls um, to kind of marry up their rugby and, and military um, lives, I suppose. But... Um, yeah, the more the merrier. <laughs> As ever, anything could happen over the next few weeks to determine who comes out on top at the end of April. Amy still sees France as the main threat, but a match-up against Wales could see her playing against Army players Beth Dainton and Gemma Rowland. Call it a dummy uh, Raf Army one, see who wins it. Um, <laughs> put the IS on the line. Uh, no, um, yeah, you know, we play quite a few of the military girls uh, with Allianz is now. Um, so when we played Wasps, they had quite a lot of the Army girls then. So it's always good coming up against them. And uh, the rivalry is definitely as strong as ever. So if we did manage to come up against Wales, um, yeah, I'm sure it'd be nice. But it's, it's also just good to see the, the military having some exposure in, at this level as well. You know, the more people that we can get playing uh, international rugby whilst having a connection with the military, I think is only a positive thing. It was announced earlier this year that the Women's World Cup has been delayed by a year, moving it to 2022. It means priorities have shifted a little in 2021, but England are determined as ever to put in a winning Six Nations performance. Cass Brazier, Forces News. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos just like this one.